We're in danger. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 10th ASO talk. Every year, the number of foreigners is increasing in Slovakia. Some people are coming for work, better living conditions, or just want to explore the culture or mentality of people. Um, and however, is Slovakia perceived as an inclusive country? Why does it matter? Why does the inclusion matter? And what advantages can it bring along with? Today, we're going to be hosting two speakers. First uh, is Zuna, Zuzana Palovic and second, Octavia McKenzie, who, are, who you can already see on the screen. Yes. Zuzana Palovic is a founder. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> He's a founder of Global Slovakia and Migration Expert, while Octavia is a South African model, teacher, and food blogger. So uh, they're going to tell you more about their experiences about uh, inclus inclusivity and uh, especially in terms of uh, living in Slovakia. But before we go deeper into the topic, I just want to let you know, uh, for those ones who are not very familiar with the concept of ASU Talk, uh, you can always watch our sessions on a monthly basis. So uh, every last weekend of the month, you're gonna be, you're gonna, you can watch us online and then if you cannot make it then you can always rewatch it on uh, on our youtube channel then also we can be found as african slovak union on facebook then we have also our linkedin profile our youtube channel as i mentioned and also instagram um and as i said you can always rewatch those previous sessions uh later you can always find them on youtube everything is recorded there uh, I just want to also very important question to uh, very important thing to to tell you. I would like to encourage you to share your your words, your ideas, your uh, your contributions to the dis discussion with our with us and uh, with these two lovely ladies who are with us today. Uh, they I'm I'm sure they will be very excited to answer all of your questions. So, uh, guys. Welcome to the discussion. I'm very happy to hear to, to hear you and to see you today. Hopefully Thank everything you so is much. Fine. Thank you very okay. much for having It's quite an honor. <laughs> <laughs> happy to hear that. Okay, guys, let's talk first um, about the inclusion as a concept in general. So broadly speaking, Zuzka, maybe you can start uh, as, a, as a migration expert. Uh, what is an inclusion? Why should we consider it? Well, <laughs> heavy waters right from the start. Um, well, I mean, inclusion is about creating a cohesive society where people's people of all walks of life or all uh, expressions of diversity feel included. So we we don't all need to be carbon copies of one another in order to be accepted in a community, in order to be accepted in a tribe. And the society gets more and more um, advanced and evolved. Of course, it all started with industrial revolution later with the advents of um, infrastructure, also in the terms of long haul travel. So we're looking at planes, uniting the planet. People started to move more and more and uh, the movement of people is a pretty new concept when we, when we look like zoom out and see it from a wider time span so up until very recently people were born in a location let's say a village or a town and they usually died within that same location when the industrial revolution happened people started to move from these villages and towns into cities for the purposes of work for acquiring capital so that they could advance their lives then this opened up even further, for example, in the case of Slovakia, with uh, the, the transatlantic ships and the industrial boom in the United States. So from basically the 1850s onwards, Slovak started journeying not just within uh, the, their, their local regions uh, in search of industry, but going across the Atlantic Ocean to the New World. And actually at the turn of the 19th and 20th century, one third of our nation emigrated. So we're actually a country of emigrants. Mm -hmm. We've benefited tremendously from other nations receiving us, being mm -hmm. inclusive towards us and integrating us, accepting us in the society. And once this did happen, we've had a lot of Slovak excellence. There's many examples of Slovaks becoming, for example, captains of industry or contributing to great scientific in innovation or even art. For example, in the United States, one of the most famous uh, persons of Slovak descent is actually Andy Warhol. So he himself was the descendant of migrants from Eastern Slovakia. Mm -hmm. 
Slovakia, Slovaks in Slovakia don't have a lot of experience with exposure to other cultures, not from the region. And that has to do a lot with the 20th century and everything that happened in Europe in the 20th century, and particularly with these countries that were once part of the Iron Curtain. So up until very, very recently, November 1989, so we're looking at 1990, we were completely cut off from the world. It's not that we couldn't receive people, we couldn't ourselves leave. If we wanted to leave, we, we left under duress or under the threat of being actually shot for leaving this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this land. So. Slovaks were a population that were artificially geographically contained for four decades. And all of a sudden, 89 happens, the borders open, Slovaks flood out. Many, many Slovak people left. There was a big wave in the 1990s because there was a lot of political instability in this country. And people were also curious about the forbidden fruit of the West. And then there was another tremendous migration wave of young people that happened when Slovakia ascended to the European Union in 2004, where about 200,000 young people left. Some of these people have come back. So again, Slovaks can, are continuing that trend of emigration. But meanwhile, since we've joined the European Union, things have politically and economically stabilized Slovakia for a while in the early 2000s was referred to as the Tetra Tiger. We are performing very, very well. And what does that mean? That means that this country becomes attractive for incoming people, for mm -hmm. immigrants. So immigrants, businesses, businesses mm -hmm. but also workers. And we can talk about that more later. I just wanted to give a quick overview. So mm -hmm. migration or incoming migrants is a kind of new phenomenon for us. And we're as a society just becoming adjusted to it. And I think we need to be patient with these former Eastern Bloc countries because it has to do with the previous regime, the fact that we were isolated and we just didn't have exposure. So now we're in a phase and thanks to organizations such as yours, you know, that are also championing for the cause of inclusivity and the vi value of immigrants and migrants coming to Slovakia, mm -hmm. that we're becoming more exposed to the positives of people that are different from us and that can actually contribute something to our society, which they very much do. Okay, so what are you trying to say is to look uh, at Slovakia from a different perspective, from a perspective of of, of people who uh, were actually also migrating, not from the perspective that we are a, a sort of a stable nation that uh, only uh, have a certain approach to immigrants that are coming here, mm -hmm. right? But because we you have absolutely a history of migrating. Yes, mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's very ironic when we're we're very close to immigrants is because we've actually benefited so much and so many of our family members, especially mm -hmm. in Eastern Slovakia, where every family is affected by migration, you know, every family has some member in America, it just goes to show we've benefited from mm -hmm, this. So mm -hmm, we need to like, mm -hmm. think a little bit more like we can't be so biased and you know, try to not be inclusive to people because obviously we benefited from inclusivity of not other nations and the kindness of other nations. And and like uh, and like Susanna said that um, many Slovaks has, have left and returned, and through the knowledge that they learned elsewhere from the West or from other parts of the world, they were able to then really influence development in Slovakia. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Slovakia is a young country, so I think that this kind of influence of either Slovaks who are traveling to foreign countries and have the urge to return, to start families, to be close to home for whatever the reason is, as well as foreigners like myself and other foreigners within Slovakia come into Slovakia either for love, for work, just to travel and they get stuck somehow because they fall in love with Slovakia because it's a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a, a foreign influence can really add color and diversity to a nation mm -hmm. and to any country. Mm -hmm. And if you look at all older nations, older countries, you know, Slovakia is young mm -hmm. in terms of borders being open. Yeah. Um, so, so it's a new thing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. whereas other okay. countries have been doing this for years. For hundreds of years. years. And we'll, you, you, you captured this very, very precisely in one short statement uh, when you said that that Slovaks might be uh, like a cabbage without the color. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this statement very much because I love it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, yes. guys, we jumped in uh, to to the the situation in the inclusive in society uh, in Slovak society, which I want to talk about a little later. But uh, let me just ask you you both are very international yeah mm -hmm. uh, octavia you are as a south african you have been living here for a while like seven years or so so you're pretty much accustomed to 
to I'm slow the environment. And Zuska, you have uh, your your parents migrated to Canada when you were very little, so you basically grew up there. So my question to you guys um, is: Is inclusion perceived in your countries of origin? Like, how is it perceived in your yeah. countries of or origin? Well. So first of all, I, my life was deeply affected by migration. So uh, mm -hmm. my parents, uh, they defected. So one year before the collapse of the Iron Curtain, we went as illegal refugee migrants uh, through um, actually the camps in Austria. At the time, there were certain centers and Austria being the most immediate country neighboring Slovakia and many of these Eastern Bloc countries was kind of a gateway. So I remember going through the actual refugee camps in Austria. Mm -hmm. So I was also a refugee at one point. And after about one year of waiting, we were granted uh, landed immigrant status in Canada. So Canada was the country that received us. And many of these countries in the new world were doing the same. Canada, USA, um, Australia, for example. And they were opening it up because A, they needed population. You know, these are new world countries that need to grow and mm -hmm. they understand the significance of having a growing population and what that means for the economy. But B, they were also looking for certain skill sets. So my parents were both highly skilled uh, they had university education, uh, so they were attractive uh, as economic migrants that could uh, contribute to Canada. So we came to Canada with my parents speaking very, very little English and, uh, of course, having to start from scratch, uh, you know, starting with low, low skilled labor until they acquired the language skills and through that then being able to secure professional uh, labor or doing the labor that they did in Slovakia. In this case, my mother was an architect. Uh, so she did eventually become an architect in Canada, but there was a certain phasing period of integration and it had a lot to do with familiarity with Canadian culture, but also acquiring the language. You can't integrate into society if you don't know the language. Mm -hmm. uh, but Canada, of course, has very pro-immigration. Uh, it's a country made up of immigrants and it's a country that's very, very successful based on their immigration policies. They really do source uh, strategically some of the best brains from all over mm. the world and America does the same Australia does the same and right, they so bring was that, was that in the case of your parents as well at that time because you know the, it must have been at least 30 years back as I yeah know. yes uh it was, was the inclusion process back then was it same similarly fast and easy how it might be for to be yeah similar? Absolutely. Canada uh, had a great infrastructure and probably actually was even more generous towards incoming uh, immigrants than it is now. Uh, they, ha they had certain funding established that, for example, my parents came from obviously Eastern Bloc country, political refugees, so they had no, no not, not much money. And so the first integration period was actually the government giving us housing for a period. Um, I remember actually moving truck coming with cheap but new furniture so we, it was like furnished by the canadian government mm. you know in support wow. i remember going to school and being confused because I, I used to speak slovak obviously in preschool and kind uh, in slovakia then i was uh, one year in austria where i went to kindergarten and i learned german and so then i was in the canadian school system and i was speaking german with the kids because i understood that okay they're not slovak so they must speak this other language but the children just laughed at me so then i became mute I stopped speaking. So then the school mm -hmm. system, again, they're used to these incoming migrant kids and they, they pu would pull me outside every single day for a special uh, language integration mm. class where I would work one-on-one -on -one with an instructor to learn the English alphabet, to learn how to say to words, to get comfortable. Mm. So there's a lot of support mm. and maybe less yeah. so now because that was very costly for the Canadian government at the time. Interesting. So how is it in case of South Africa, Octavia? So South Africa is quite a young country as far as countries go, but it's probably one of the biggest melting pots in terms of like cultural travel and integration. Mm -hmm. uh, the Portuguese, the Dutch, the English, you know, and as well as another 10 tribes or another nine tribes within South Africa, more native to Africa. Uh, so South Africa, I feel very fortunate that, of course, we've been through apartheid. This is one of the first questions that people ask me, knowing I'm a South African. So like, oh, you must be a racist because you were part of the apartheid regimes. Um, and that's not the case. So I feel fortunate that when I started going to school, my integration was other because it was already in the fall of apartheid and the apartheid government, as well as my parents being activists, activists and coming from that background to support all 
all racial diversity, people from different countries, colors, creeds, everything. And I was already integrated into a schooling system where we were mixed. So my interpretation or impression of that apartheid regime is maybe quite different. And of course, you still see um, some, some social status suffering through it. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, South Africa is a very diverse country. In terms of religion, we are accepting of a multitude of religions. I remember in school, uh, we would celebrate Jewish holidays, Muslim holidays. I was annoyed because everybody celebrated the Christian holidays, but oh, yeah. it was everybody got Christmas off, but we didn't get to leave fr on Friday at midday to go pray. But mm -hmm. so in school, they are very encouraging and very inclusive. And the problem comes not from the educated, minority but from the uneducated majority uh, so this is one of the biggest problems in inclusion whether it's racial or sexual or uh, social anything inclusion is not just about you coming from a different country but it's about you having a different opinion mm -hmm. or you mm -hmm. be into a different sex or something Di you know diversity, diversity in of general thought, of thought. diversity of ideology yeah. diversity yeah. of lifestyle you know and mm -hmm. this is where i think i feel so fortunate in coming from such a background where it was accepted especially the way i grew up accepted to be anything and to live from who you are and not to be affected by those judgmental opinions of people who have a fear and i think yeah. that the stigma comes from fear that there is a fear of the unknown, there's a fear of you taking my land, of you taking my culture, you taking my religion. Taking our women. Taking, hey. Taking, yeah, taking our job opportunities, hey. et cetera. So mm -hmm. this needs to switch. And I think in terms of Slo Slovakia, it is switching, but there's still there's still a lot of, I feel super integrated. And as Zuzana said before, learning a language is very important. And in Slovakia, that's not easy, mm -hmm. but it does help. It does really help because it shows people, it shows Slovaks, because they were always a closed community and they were always affected by all these other countries and communities and trying to take something so that fear once you learn the language or you're willing to integrate into some aspects of the culture they see you as a friend and not as a threat they see you as a potential family member so like this is and, and important I, th I think slovaks are just not used to also foreigners learning the language mm -hmm. so when they do they really appreciate that vested uh, interest mm -hmm. and effort put in to learn the language mm -hmm. and it's a lot harder to discriminate against someone that's speaking your language it's confusing it's super very confusing, confusing. Mm -hmm. well, for the brain naturally mm -hmm. because uh-huh mm -hmm. because the oh, you yeah, speak yeah. Yeah. yeah in reference to what you were saying that uh, inclusion is not the the matter of sex race uh, whatever a category we're talking about. However, I might ask a tricky question here. Uh, do you think a black person in the post-apartheid period in South Africa will have the same opinion here? Um, I think now you have to separate the color from the social status and the education that that mm -hmm. person has gone through. Because I have like a huge array and multitude of friends you know like like honestly color creed whatever um and it depends if the person wants to put themselves in a position of being a victim or not you get to choose you're the victim uh and that, that's that's an unfortunate thing because if you come here already with the stigma that you will be victimized you might even already start that life of victimization. So everything that happens around you will be like, oh, it's because I'm black mm -hmm. or it's because mm -hmm. I'm gay or it's because mm -hmm. I'm this or mm -hmm. something. So I think that it really does. Um, I'm a difficult person to ask about this because I really do think it comes from your deep soul and your inner belief in yourself and what you have mm -hmm. to show, show how you're going to show up. But it is true. It you, cannot, I, you cannot answer for a black person. Yeah. No, I can't answer because in this lifetime, I haven't lived that. But um, I have been a woman growing up in like a society where maybe boys were given more of an opportunity. But I, for me personally, it never stopped me. If the boys were playing cricket, I played cricket. You know, they were doing woodwork. I was the first girl to do woodwork. They were wearing trousers. I wanted to wear the trousers. So this also, this it's there's always you can always create a stigma around anything. But it's up to the individual whether they want to put themselves into that box mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as your question goes, like, um, I can imagine that it is harder for, um, like, an ethnic, a, raci a racially different 
mm -hmm. ethnic group to mm -hmm. adjust to Slovakia because there is that stigma. Mm -hmm. And for me, I look European and at times I look Slovak and then I speak the language. So I have had a much easier, and I'm super grateful, uh, a much easier integration. But then again, there are so many wonderful, open, encouraging people in Slovakia and you will always find your tribe. So if you come with that mentality that you will find your tribe, you can find your tribe anywhere. Mm -hmm. There will always be people that disagree. There will be people who comment on my accent or comment on my lifestyle, lifestyle or something, but you will always find your tribe. You just have mm -hmm. to know what that is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, from what you were saying, the I, I can tell that more complex society is, the more difficult or more complex the situation gets. Before we have, uh, however, Before move to... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before we move to uh, the, the inclusion as a concept of Slovakia, I would like to remind you guys, those who are watching us to uh, just type your question. Um, uh, I'm sure that guys or ladies will be more than happy to answer your question. So just yeah. uh, just type it in and and we'll be very happy to to read it for you. Uh, so you already guys mentioned that uh, you know you, you mentioned your experience of living in Slovakia. Uh, maybe you can uh, introduce our uh, our like people who are watching us maybe how was the process of of uh, coming in and getting more accustomed to the society and to the Slovak mentality how was it for you when you first arrived uh, so for me it's a little bit different obviously because i was born here so i grew up speaking the language but as a very young child uh, as i said we defected so i grew up in a totally different environment in a totally different culture thankfully in a very inclusive society that canada is um, and then I started to return back to Slovakia when I was 18 and I would usually spend like my university summer here. So three months here or a month over Christmas. But it was quite recently when I decided to actually, uh, after finishing my PhD in London, to come back and make Slovakia home. And mm -hmm. uh, even as a Slovak speaker and even being ethnically Slovak, of course, there's adjustment challenges. It is a different mm -hmm. society. It's a society that has also gone through certain traumas, you know, so we can't exactly compare it to Western societies that didn't have the scar of communism that's left very, very strong imprints in terms of mindsets, mm -hmm. in terms of closed mindedness, in terms of fear of otherness, because that was the programming for those four decades. The people outside were bad and we were good and the people outside were a threat and, and we're building this ideal world. So that's deeply ingrained on a subconscious level and we have to understand that it is there um but slovakia has also off offered so many so many opportunities and uh for myself for my organization for my work and these are opportunities that maybe wouldn't have had had i stayed in the united kingdom mm. or had i stayed in canada where there's actually a lot of those gaps have already been filled so a lot of opportunities or yeah. there's a lot yeah. of competition and in slovakia there's less so and there's so many gaps because of that mm. transition from the planned to the free market economy there's so many uh things that are missing also from NGOs, you know, the presence of NGOs that was forbidden during during the totalitarian regime. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm so, so grateful. It's like <clears throat> this wide open field of opportunity here where where in, in many ways it's a lot freer in mm -hmm. Slovakia than it is in more advanced countries where there's already much more structure established. You can't move quite as much in your career. A lot of or, red tape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you said that when you came uh so it was very interesting the first time i came for a holiday it was christmas time so there was a lot of snow and then you change your mind <laughs> <laughs> i got back on the airplane and i left again no i'm joking <laughs> um so for me it was very interesting i came for for a partner so for love so i just had this one person to stick to and that can also be quite challenging i think for many couples and foreigners who come here for a slovak usually a slovak woman um hmm. It's also very challenging for that person who has to host a person from an outside state because they want you to be happy. They want you to integrate, but they're not in control of that integration. So for me, my, my partner, he was really great. He introduced me to his friends, to his family. I felt accepted, but there were a lot of cultural differences and a huge language barrier. Um, luckily for that generation or our generation, many people were already speaking English and they wanted to improve their English. So I was like a good bouncing board for them you know to to converse but a lot of them were very shy and very s critical of themselves and i think uh -huh. that that's quite a slovak um mm -hmm. stigma or, or a, 
an imprint that Slovaks have is to be super critical and yeah, A-type personality yeah. on can, themselves. Can I just interject right there? And just for any of those foreigners that are listening to this, like uh, you may feel that Slovaks are being discriminatory cold. or cold mm -hmm. or judgmental towards you because you're from an outside culture, you're an outsider, but they're actually that way to themselves and they're that way to other Slovaks. Uh -huh. <laughs> so okay. it's, it's yeah. kind of a... I guess a, a negative of the culture that it is a negative of the culture, and that's it goes back to that fear aspect, you know, that yeah. they they you, have... yeah. Do, do you consider that as a biggest cultural difference? Was it the most yeah. challenging thing that you faced I, in Slovakia? I, I think yes. I think coming from like if you're from the UK or from America or even South Africa, you know, if you're from a colonial, ex-colonial, colonist like mm -hmm. state or country. You know, they were the ones who were traveling, exploring. They were going to other nations, integrating their language. They had a certain level of this um, extroverted personality mm -hmm. because they knew that it would serve them. Mm -hmm. So it's in our genes to be like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas Slovaks, they were this closed mm -hmm. state and they had mm -hmm. to protect. Yeah. And it has, again, I just need to keep injecting a lot of that. Genetics. Has, <laughs> it has to do with the totalitarian <laughs> regime when there was that. Um, informal, I guess, uh, network of people that would spy on each other. Mm -hmm. So neighbors mm -hmm. were encouraged mm -hmm. to spy on neighbors, family members were encouraged to spy and report on family members. So it really wasn't safe to be open, to be friendly. Mm -hmm. You really could only share your inner world or, or, or your, your genuine feelings to your absolute inner circle. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was just a partner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not even speak that in front of your children because children were conditioned to report on their parents. So Slovaks are, were programmed to be very, very close because it just wasn't safe to be open. It wasn't mm -hmm. safe to share your heart, to show your personality. In fact, it wasn't safe to have a personality, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. We're, we're talking mostly now uh, about the older generation, right? Yes. Yeah. What yeah, about yeah. the younger generation? Are well, we, are we this, the same I was like, to this generation? Mm -hmm. Does it wrap up on us or are we different? It, the young generation, yeah, absolutely. And it has mm -hmm. to do with, um, of course, exposure to English language. It has mm -hmm. to do with, you know, uh, the internet, YouTube, uh, Facebook. People have a lot more contact. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the fact that since 89 borders have been open, so these children have grown, grown up going on holiday. Big. Whether, uh -huh. uh, whether it's to the sea or mm -hmm. to a language mm -hmm. exchange mm -hmm. program in London, et cetera. So the new generation is totally different, thank God. And every generation builds on the shoulders mm -hmm. of those that came before them. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, changing. It's, it's, inco sure. it's incomparable. Mm -hmm. It's incomparable. So, so that was my case was luckily I was of this generation that has had exposure of some kind to like the West or, or a different way of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, but Slovakia has a lot of traditions, heavy traditions, which is beautiful. But if you are so obsessed with one tradition, it's also very dangerous because then it's an ideology. Mm -hmm. So then it's like the circular circular idealism mm -hmm. or you're indoctrinating your, mm -hmm. your mm -hmm. family with yeah. this. And this that is not. Much really, yeah, sorry. Go for it. <laughs> it very much relates to what you were saying when you were talking about uh, us being afraid or Slovaks mm -hmm. having this internal fear mm -hmm. in in reference to uh, to foreigners or maybe towards themselves as well. Mm -hmm. Towards themselves, exactly. That's mm -hmm. where it begins. That's where it starts. Yeah. And that's the same with uh, not just accepting foreigners, but you know, in Slovakia, there's a problem with um, the, like the Nazi movements and uh, like LGBT communities and everything. Anything that is different is very difficult for them to accept. And I think this is with more foreigners moving in, this is also helping to open eyes up because we have had contact with this for a long time. Mm -hmm. you know with mm -hmm. with different mm -hmm. ethnic groups and it's, and it's normal and so that normalcy is actually transferred exactly. you know mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you influence those that are around you and mm -hmm. you have a different perspective on diversity whether it's also sexual diversity uh you 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 tacitly influence those uh in your circle, you know, but just to show how Slovakia has been changing, I did get some numbers as the migration expert and I want to share those with you. So uh, in 2004, there were 22,000 registered foreigners in Slovakia. And in 2020, there are now 150,000 registered foreigners in Slovakia. So that is in itself a reflection of openness yeah. that foreigners will not come to a society where they feel excluded from or they feel persecuted so mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. fact that this pool is getting bigger and bigger is a positive indicator that Slovakia is also opening up it is but also what I've noticed is um in being an admin on the foreigners in Bratislava page like Bratislava is obviously separate to the rest of Slovakia 
So we're talking most of the migration is probably also to the capital Absolutely. city where, also, where, where, where the economic opportunities okay. are. Mm -hmm. But from what I see is there are a lot of very unhappy foreigners in Slovakia. Mm -hmm. And I think that, so? sorry, say again. Do, do you know some of them? Why is it so you think? Uh, um, this is what I see on the comments, you know, like there, there really are a lot of disgruntled, unhappy foreigners encouraging Slovaks not to move back, encouraging other foreigners not to come back, not to move here. Yeah. If somebody okay. posts something, I'm looking to move here, they're like, don't even try, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that this goes down to like the aspect of the person themselves. But there are certain methods you can take if you move to a foreign country, you know, like to be able to integrate with ease is I think to adapt some of that culture. If you move into a place, don't move there trying to indoctrinate them with where you come from. I mean, this worked in the past, you know, but then those countries were frowned upon. But so now the idea is that if you move in somewhere, it's because you actually want to learn about their culture. It's like a good conversation. You want to learn about that other person. Mm -hmm. You want to learn about what makes them think, why they feel that way, so that you are able to adjust and to change your colors to integrate in some aspect. So what you are saying is important to it. come with an open heart when you're moving to a different course, country. Of course. Be willing to learn some aspect of the culture. Be willing to, don't forget who you are. Bring your activities that you have from home and mm -hmm. find your communities who are here. Because like we say, people are people everywhere. So mm -hmm. it's, it's possible to be, to feel integrated anywhere in society. You just have to, you can take those steps and those measures to becoming part of that society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right. what, you're, what you guys were saying is that with more exposure we uh, get nowadays, the more open uh, as a society we are. However, some people might question, is it always, why, why is it important? Do we always uh, have to be that open? Do we all, always have to accommodate new influences as you were talking about the language, mm -hmm. different culture, exposure to uh, say American culture or, or pop culture that is mostly produced by America, right? So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some people some people get uh, critical about it. Why, why do we need this? A lot mm -hmm. of people are asking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as in, why, why should we be, uh, is your question why should Slovaks be open to foreigners exactly. is the mm -hmm. argumentation there is that okay uh, then right. our tradition might be in threat because we we, we tend okay. to accommodate these yeah. different influences I our own identity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so as I said since 2004 the number of foreigners in Slovakia has um, grown sevenfold uh, however Slovakia is the still the third um, least open country to foreigners and all the entire in, in the entire european union so we have the least amount we're, we're ranked third in terms of the least amount of foreigners in our society and one of the hardest immigration laws like one of the mm -hmm. hardest immigration systems mm -hmm. to get through mm -hmm. if you want to actually come and live here and work here and integrate and become a citizen and of course citizen. of course mm -hmm. it's easier if, if you're a european union citizen because of the supranational laws mm -hmm. that were uh, set up by brussels but if you're a foreigner from outside the eu there's a lot of paperwork yeah. and red tape and waiting you have to go through especially if you want to secure citizenship. So Slovak, Slovak citizenship is still very difficult to get, which shows that we're really not okay with accepting mm -hmm. other people into our tribe in terms of granting them um, the status as citizen, as someone being equal to us mm -hmm. in, in this uh, national context. So... Um, Yes, Sorry, I just got dis <laughs> distracted. Um, I'm letting you express yourself fully. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> we have a we have bears there, yeah. they're bears in, <laughs> in the garden <laughs> um so uh so yes of course it's not necessary to open to foreigners you can stay closed you can stay in your comfort zone uh, but it just comes comes down to human values um whether you want to be open to other human beings and to make it easier for them to live among you or if you just want to spite them and make it as difficult as possible and shun them and, and turn your back to them you know so it is a question of values and these values of being open are values we're going to start to have to address as a a society as the number of foreigners continues to grow. So I'm going to come from the human aspect that um, without integration the world wouldn't be what it is now and we are one human race and that's the way that it should be accepted and integrated and this is how we should all look at ourselves and at each other. 
Um, and without fighting and resisting, just everything would be so much easier if we could just really accept and understand that like you have knowledge to bring, I have knowledge to bring, mm -hmm. you are bringing amazing knowledge, you know, and, and, and we all enrich each other. And we all enrich each other but, and but, it's one family. But even now speaking on a practical level, allies, aspect, you create your allies. Uh, yeah. on, on a practical level, on an economic level, um, our, our society or our economy is suffering on two spectrums of the scale. We're missing high skilled experts, Mm -hmm. in this economy and we're missing low skilled labor and that is a problem of Between any uh -huh. d d advancing uh, economy uh, this, these are the issues they have to address and this is mm -hmm. also why countries like Germany uh, like Canada like the United Kingdom have opened up it's because of economic need there needs to be a supply of human capital and it's the brains and the hands. And that's actually why European, the union even became this open zone. Mm -hmm. And that's why all these that's people, Eastern Europeans moved to the West to do mm -hmm. these jobs because there was a shortage of skills. As and well that, as more that, of the East are coming yeah. here to central yeah. Eastern and Europe. That, that's uh -huh. why Slovakia is now trying to change its immigration policies vis-a-vis, -vis, for example, its neighbors in Ukraine mm -hmm. or Serbia where we have migrant workers coming in, mostly men. They're not interested in settling here. They have wives and families back home, but they're interested in coming here because there's economic opportunity. They can gain capital and they can send that money back home. Which doesn't help to, the Slovak economy, but at to, least there's labor It force. helps in terms of labor force, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, yeah. right. It's pretty obvious when, he, when we're talking about economic reasons, but I'm going to ask you differently. When it comes to, like, culturally wise, um, these different influences, right? You were talking about um, uh, very, very deep and very, very uh, broad cultural, Slovak cultural heritage we have. Uh, would would migration or these foreign influences somehow have uh, have a negative impact on it? I, would I it, think would it uh, gradually deteriorate or disappear? Not, not at all. No, I no, think no, no. Um, co contrast gives rise to clarity and actually Slovaks by coming into contact with foreigners come into a cognizance of what their cultural heritage is because you have to explain it. You have to explain what is Brinza, what are Brinza with Hal Halushki, what is a Kroy, what is the folklore, what does the national anthem mean? You're forced to embrace uh, your own culture, to explain mm -hmm. who you are mm -hmm. and who your country is mm -hmm. and what your culture is. So it, it can only strengthen us. And that also tourism does that. You know, mm -hmm. if we want to attract tourists, we can't just not say anything about ourselves. We have to find a way to explain what it is. What is our culture? What is our country? What can we offer the world? And that's because foreigners are coming in and they're knocking on their door and they're saying, hello, what are you? Who are you? Can you explain Where yourself? Slovakia? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think like if you, you know, you grow up in this culture and like, as I said, there's a very beautiful, like a lot of traditions. Every region has its own tradition. I love traveling around Slovakia, like different mm -hmm. little towns, Actually, cities. Actually, we, we greet you from rural Slovakia. We're in Zahoria yeah. right now in this little hamlet of maybe seven houses located in- You have a beautiful background. We yeah. do, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Even beautiful Painted cat. this morning. <laughs> and uh, we, we pick some. I'm just going to show you just because there's fields of sunflowers around. So we pick some. Beautiful. some Today we were at a monument so, for Stefanik. Uh, uh, yeah, we, uh, a lo we local hero. Bradlo, hero. Uh, uh, probably the greatest national hero. He's voted the greatest national hero ever. Mm -hmm. uh, the son of a nation, Milan Rastislav Stefanik. So we were there. We were also at another monument. Um, so we moved from World War I now to World War II, where the partisans, um, in commemoration for the partisan movement here, because Slovakia had the second largest uprising against the Nazis in the entire continent. So we were there. So we really enjoy, and not just me and Octavia, but our entire friend <laughs> circle, enjoy yeah. discovering Slovakia. That's the beautiful. It's very nice to hear from a person who uh, w was exposed or were living abroad for so long to talk about the cult cultural heritage we have in Slovakia. This is very nice, guys. You, uh, I hope that you're going to have a nice time there. But this is very interesting point what you said that actually, paradoxically, due to the influx of foreigners or fo for foreign uh, foreign aspects, we uh, reinforce our our culture, our identity through mm -hmm. understanding ourselves better. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you are, if you have deep roots, you know, then you have the possibility to grow, form a tree, and then you can shade others. So I think in knowing like your roots of Slovakia, when foreigners come here, it's, I think it's really wonderful that if you are excited about it, we're excited about it. 
you're able to teach us. Like my mm -hmm. soul has chosen to travel because I want to learn. Mm -hmm. So I think this is this is also something in mm -hmm. coming here mm -hmm. that if uh, Slovaks are able to teach, and I know mm -hmm. also when I'm in South Africa and I have Slovaks there or foreigners there, mm -hmm. I get so excited when I can show them my country mm -hmm. and I can remember things about my culture, my country, mm -hmm. my everything. Mm -hmm. So the same way I think I, as I have moved from South Africa, I will always be a South African. And I will always have aspects of that African culture and mm -hmm. the sunshine and everything right. inside. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also in Slovakia I really don't think that there needs to be that fear just don't forget who you are mm -hmm. and don't give that up easily mm -hmm. rather encourage and influence others with the love of that culture mm -hmm. of the language of the food mm -hmm. of the warmth because Slovaks can also be incredibly warm mm -hmm. and it's seen in everything it's seen in the dance you know in the in the theater in the theater in the cultural folklore. aspects folklore mm -hmm. food in the croy you know like mm -hmm. each region has these beautiful costumes mm -hmm. and it says so much there's a in, story in, in the so many stories the heart is really yeah. reflected in the hospitality yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Slovaks certainly do have a lot to offer mm -hmm. foreigners and also the and world vice versa mm -hmm. and I think that that's a symbiosis mm -hmm. of life in general is mm -hmm. that everybody coming from a different mm -hmm. perspective yeah. perspective has a broadening of that perspective yeah. to offer and it has to do you can apply that to an individual level like yeah. if you're confident in yourself and you feel like you have something to offer others then you're naturally also open to what others can teach you, you without know? the fear mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you understand that y'all y'all are different and y'all are unique but there's there's something that that can be exchanged and mm -hmm. that's very exciting because mm -hmm. that helps you grow as well as the okay, nation. So maybe it takes time for us to realize ourselves and to reinforce our identity yes. in, in contrast to uh, foreigners who are coming to Slovakia. Mm -hmm. That's what you're mm -hmm. saying, right? Exactly, exactly. Interesting. Okay, guys, let's take a look at your respective industries you're operating in. Octavia, mm -hmm. you are a food blogger. You're also a teacher and model. So you your portfolio is very, very diverse. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need from me already? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would like to know how uh, how is inclusion perceived there in these different departments? These fields. You as a teacher, you know, okay. uh, in the educational system, uh, in the fashion industry, uh, now you started to do the the block the oh, yes, food, mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. maybe maybe how the inclusion how people perceive you as a foreigner well for me i think all the industries that i uh, like i have come into contact with is all deep rooted in my soul so it's things that i mean teaching in terms of teaching i never expected to be a teacher to be honest but when i came to slovakia the first time i realized that this is something that i can do if i want to live here so I wanted to integrate, I wanted to immigrate, I wanted to live here. So this was the path that I took and it stuck with me. And I really, I love spending time. I teach mostly kids. I have adults as well. But for me, learning about their culture is as important as them learning about mine. So language, like it's important for me to learn the Slovak language, but it's as important for them to learn English so that their lives are now open for them to be able to travel to explore, to have that sense of freedom and be able to return potentially with something else or to take the amazing fundamentals that they have learned in Slovakia elsewhere. So this is, I think that that's a, like, I have never found problems in, in my industry, mm -hmm. like in the teaching aspect, mm -hmm. always been very accepted and encouraged. Which is inherent in the industry. I mean, she's a native speaker of English and she shares that skill. The ability right. to speak English with others. So obviously there's not going to be biases, but actually no. rewards. Okay. Rewards. <laughs> and and my, my main aim is really just to spread positivity and love. That for me is the most important thing. That's so if beautiful. I if I come into contact with that opportunity, I take it. And in terms of acting and modeling, it's the same. You know, it's like it's it's a picture. It's it's nothing like there, there should be no judgment in terms mm -hmm. of that. And actually in the fashion uh, industry, the more diverse and more more different you are, the better, isn't it? Better. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's also, um, I think all my industries are very creative and creative thinkers think differently maybe. So that, that also helps a lot that in creativity, you have an expansive mind and you are accepting of things because when you're being creative, you're being different. You're, you're trying to create something that is different. New. So new innovation, innovation. Based. So this is just that mm -hmm. like mindset and that thinking as well. Mm -hmm. 
And then in terms of the food, this is actually very interesting for me because it's about a Slovak food and about Slovak culture. So it's and about in Slovak, actually. and in Slovak, hey, it's in Slovak. So it's for the Slovak population at the moment, as well as in English. But to for me to be educated because I have a hunger to learn about like mm -hmm. Slovak traditions, mm -hmm. cultures, where this comes from, and to support the local markets, mm -hmm. and also to encourage Slovaks to support their local markets, mm -hmm. um, and so, then as well as to educate like foreign population about like the beauty and the cultural differences and the cultural ways of doing things in Slovakia and the love and the care that these people are giving to their products mm -hmm. so this is this is my my new thing like that 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 aspect and then I also do creative I make um I do accessories so but that's also about integrated well-being of the person the mm -hmm. woman and, and your inner love and your mm -hmm. inner capacity and you work with local artisans and production do. of these yeah. but the sales point or the target audience is actually global so she's also helping to spotlight Slovak artists and Slovak yeah. productions Slovak collaborations mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. take those into a global market because mm -hmm. of her inherent internationalness internationalness <laughs> so how about you Zuzka? Uh, you have an ngo right you yes. are also a migration expert as we said how, yeah. how is it your field uh yeah well uh, uh i'm very my all my work is very much international focus so the whole mission of our ngo is to share slovakia with the world uh, so we help to codify, capture aspects of Slovak history, culture, customs, food. Uh, we put those, for example, in the format of books or online courses, or we do um, bi-weekly webinars where we share this knowledge, usually with a global audience. Interestingly enough, most mm -hmm. of our followers are actually Slovak Americans. So these are people that are U.S. citizens. They're not per se connected to Slovakia. They've been actually removed from Slovakia, usually for several generations. Mm -hmm. uh, their ancestors go back to that big wave that uh, immigrated to the United States on the conversion of the 19th and 20th century. So when we were still part of the kingdom of Hungary, uh, but for them, it's very, very still much, connected. they're very still connected, connected on mm -hmm. a, a DNA level to Slovakia. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they're still connected also emotionally to Slovakia. So they're finding actually a lot of healing uh, through our work by better understanding uh, the, their roots a better understanding an aspect of their identity and better understanding the journey of their ancestors. So in this case, it's their parents, grandparents, great grandparents. So we're very, very like honored actually with uh, Dr. Gabriella to be doing this work. Well, I want to, I'm, so, I'm going to big up you and show your new yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is our fourth book. New promotion. Let's do it again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's super Slovak. It's actually beautiful work. I, yeah. I, I really, really uh, appreciate what you're doing, Zuzka, that you're basically showcasing Slovak culture and heritage to um, foreign communities outside yeah. of Slovakia. Uh, I was wondering, just by the side, uh, yeah. since you, you already brought up your book uh, yeah. that you currently published, uh, is, is what you're doing, uh, well, it, it's apparently well received among Slovak diaspora in the US, as you said. Yes. Um, what is the approach by uh, non-Slavs? Uh -huh. Yeah, so they uh, non-Slavs have also been very, very supportive. Um, also, for example, people that are connected with Slovaks and better want to understand their spouse yeah. or their in-laws. Mm -hmm. uh, or their integration they, into Slovakia. Yeah, they, or better mm -hmm. understand the history of Slovakia. Mm -hmm. So they're also the ones that purchase our books and they attend our webinars. Maybe they're not so much the ones that buy our courses uh, because that doesn't resonate so much with them. That's more those people with Slovak roots that are committed to those education mm -hmm. journeys. Mm -hmm. But they really appreciate our webinars and they really appreciate our book because they get finally access um, to information about the country uh, that's mm -hmm. in the English language and that's beyond exactly. just fact and yeah. figures. Uh, so we're mm -hmm. also very grateful to the foreigner community for their support. And I don't want to say that we exclude Slovaks. We actually very much also work with Slovaks to, so Slovaks can start to see the value of their identity, mm -hmm. the value of their mm -hmm. precious, rich, deep heritage mm -hmm. and the value to of the root beauty themselves of their in country it. and all mm -hmm. the opportunities. Mm -hmm. it offers to people that want to come and live mm -hmm. here and so we help um, contribute to civic empowerment um, and then uh, yeah empowerment especially we, we're working with youth which is why we wrote this book super slovaks which we wanted to highlight 50 personalities that tell the story of slovakia but these 50 personalities also change the world. So by changing Slovakia, you can change the world. Slovakia is a part of the world. And that's very much the messaging in this book, which um, is, is 
going to be going out to more and more uh, children. We had a very successful crowdfunding campaign. So Slovaks also support us. So we're very mm, grateful. So to e that. Education, education in the yeah, youth is our, like big way for accepting of foreigners and also for encouraging Slovaks that they can be more worldly, that they don't have to have the fear that they have to stay mm -hmm. here, they have to be here, but they actually have the potential and possibility to to travel, explore, bring it back or not. It's 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 a free world. Mm -hmm. right, right. This is very powerful. Guys, you won't believe but we do have a question for you. Ah. <laughs> Sako is asking or saying, as much as you are very positive about immigration and integration, don't you think there should be proper regulations on how foreigners come to Slovakia? Somewhere during the discussions, Zuzana Palovic mentioned that high growth foreigners were are or are considered for stay and integration in the USA, Australia and Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, uh, so Slovakia is not... Uh, at the at the level of Canada or Australia or these new world I don't countries, think considered it yet, no? uh, so, so we're a very very young nation. You know, we're we're we're, we're not even thirty years old. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just learning how to run our own country. It's a young adult, and let alone learning how to integrate new people. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is an economic need for highly skilled migrants. That's a reality, and that's what they're dealing with on our government level. And they're also dealing with that in Parliament. And there's a lot of actually talk about this: how we can at attract brains to Slovakia, but there. Are but we're of course nowhere near the economic powerhouses that are these new world countries. And then we don't have this track record or this exposure of, of being established for as long, even though these countries are still young compared to older countries like Germany or, or the UK, um, it's all new. So there has to be patience. And of course, um, there has to be also campaigns that show mm -hmm. the value of migrants to society in order to shift the thinking uh, bottom, mm -hmm. because if people at the bottom of society, let's say the mass, starts to be more open to it it's of course going to make it much more easy for also the decision makers to craft policies that open let's say the floodgates to there, high school there laborers. are private companies who recruit they go about the recruitment process of hiring highly skilled managers ceos for their companies mm -hmm. so this mm -hmm. is down to them mm -hmm. and the screening process is quite tough mm -hmm. Um, in terms of visas, of course, if you go into the company, they, mm -hmm. they handle it. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's and, not and at the that, government level and yet. And that's what they're, what they're trying to shift oh. is to open up these immigration policies. And that's just going to take time. But it is already happening because I said, even mm -hmm. though we're one of the most close countries in the European Union, we've still sevenfold grown sevenfold in terms of the amount of foreigners we have in the society since 2004 alone. Mm -hmm. And that also has to do with the fact that we're influenced by the European Union and their mm -hmm. immigration policies. Mm -hmm. So we do have to open up whether we like it or not. And that's just a fact. Yes, you already touched upon the um, benefits of inclusion in Slovak society. Maybe just to wrap up uh, mm -hmm. from your perspective, you, we, you were talking about the economic benefits uh, then we were t we you, you addressed uh, the um, uh, the understanding of our identity uh, through through knowing foreigners or through uh, you know interacting with foreigners. Is there anything else you would like to uh, address here? What are the other benefits of, of inclusion? A more fun and colorful life. For sure. And also like more like for you as a Slovak to know that if you are willing to include others, you will be included elsewhere because you will learn like the way that other people operate, that other cultures operate. And then when you have the opportunity to travel or go somewhere, you will already have some something in yourself you're like, aha, OK. So to drop that fear mm -hmm. to having like external influence is a really, really wonderful thing. But don't forget who you are. Yeah. <laughs> don't lose yourself. Before, Which is why I'm going to ask you the very last question. I would like to uh, give a last chance to to people who are watching us to uh, type their questions to you guys. Yes. Because <laughs> ask us questions. <laughs> we there have a few. Still, left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is still some room for for some questions from the audience. So, guys, if you have something uh, that you would like to ask, please do so. Mm -hmm. uh, very last question. Slovakia within an, an international context. Uh, is being international community inclusive to Slovakia? Let's take now, uh, let, let's talk about Slovakia from perspective of a foreigner, right? What is uh, Slovakia's positions in today's world? 
What do you well, think? Well, as, as Anna was saying, like the one of the worst in terms of accepting and including, and mm -hmm. I think the foreign community generally, a, a lot of people do feel this, feel this way. Um, and in the city, it's a lot more accepting than it can be in smaller cities. I think villages are fine because then again, it's another mentality. Um, but I think the small cities probably suffer the most in terms of acceptance and inclusion. But I feel that it's changing a lot. Like there, there's a huge interest in international, more international cafes, restaurants, films, mm -hmm. music, mm -hmm. concerts, everything. So this is, it's becoming more and more apparent that this is normalized, mm -hmm. this foreign Brilliant. aspect. And also the yeah. foreign communities mm -hmm. that's growing so yeah. foreigners are meeting yeah. foreigners and they feel then more comfortable to maybe integrate mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. into slovak society and i i would just like to add i think the the more visible foreigners become in slovak society um the better it will be for integration because mm -hmm. uh, let's say in terms of foreigners owning cafes in terms of foreigners owning shops in terms of foreigners owning a lot. restaurants mm -hmm. and slovaks actually using those services and facilities slovaks will come into contact how much foreigners can actually benefit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um their everyday mm -hmm. reality and you as know. you said that color comes in you know mm -hmm. that, that, that there's and, a, and most obviously through food you know through the belly you the said africans have an idea where slovakia is or if this country <laughs> even exists <laughs> <laughs> my, my journey to Slovakia, I was working at a ski resort in South Africa. Yes, we have mm -hmm. ski resorts in South Africa. <laughs> um, I met Slovaks there and they told me about Slovakia. I was like, Slovakia, where, where is that? And they like, Austria. I was like, oh, Austria, yes, of course, Austria, I know, you know. Um, and I didn't know about it when I first came here and I came and it's, it's, it's really, it's a tiny European city, Central Europe, I would say. And it is an absolutely wonderful place. And nature is beautiful. It's central. You're able to travel everywhere. Mm -hmm. you got the they mountains. Don't you don't have the sea, but that's okay. There's Croatia for that. Um, and I think that if foreigners are, are willing to firstly be accepting of themselves um, and then being willing to integrate a little bit, you know, to accept some aspect of Slovak culture and to come from a point of understanding that this is still very new for Slovaks to be bringing in so many foreigners. Um, I think that, like, as we said, that is changing. So foreigners just need to be patient and, and still bring what they have to offer from the heart and not from a point of um, opposition. Because if you move into another country, you're not you're not moving here to oppose to their culture or their behavior. You're moving here to learn something and to integrate. Mm -hmm as well as to bring something of yours. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, that mirroring aspect, if foreigners also see that, that I'm sorry, if Slovaks see that foreigners are coming here with mm -hmm. that thought, you know, of integrating, not wanting to change them, then again, it would, that fear will drop away and things can really like integrate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Zuzka, maybe from your perspective, uh, when you're living in Canada, Mm -hmm. uh, do people there have an idea where Slovakia is and where is it and what is Slovakia yeah. about? Is, not, is not, there a certain stereotype related to the country? Certainly. Uh, Slovakia is classified as Eastern Europe. It's classified Eastern mm -hmm. Bloc. Slovaks are Eastern Europeans. Mm -hmm. So they go into that Eastern European slash Slavic category. And uh, no, people don't know the country. Uh, maybe they know a little bit because we had a Slovak hockey player at the time playing for the Vancouver Canucks. We had Pavel Dimitra. So in the newspaper, mm -hmm. it was always like Slovakia's Pavel Dimitra or Pavel Dimitra from Slovakia. But in general, no, that also has to do with Slovakia. Slovakia is not good at uh, celebrating itself. Slovakia is not good at representing itself. We're just it's developing big thing. our tourism, mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. branding, our nation branding. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is all new to us. Mm -hmm. And so we can't blame the fact that the world doesn't know us because we don't make an effort to share ourselves with the world mm -hmm. and also we're a young country we're a little country and we're not making global contributions that's the reality right now our, our best asset are our people it's our human capital and many of our people are abroad working in foreign countries so and societies <laughs> so um yeah no the world does not know us but that's okay we're mm -hmm. only we're, we're how, old, how old are we exactly 28 years old so <laughs> young young yeah, adult yeah, super yeah. young adult guys um, probably is asking the, or did I interrupt you? You wanted no, to ask me. Done, done, okay. done. Ruben is asking, uh, do you see any digital nomads moving through Slovakia over the last few years? More and more, but I think also many Slovaks have moved elsewhere to become digital nomads now that, mm -hmm. now that it's for them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but I, yes more I, and more yeah i think there's a trend in general for digital nomads have um you know are in the lucky position where they can roam 
you know, they can be nomadic as, as the word, as the, as the phrase is termed. And uh, they're definitely looking into these central Eastern European countries that are cheap. Mm, financially. You know, they can have great lifestyles mm -hmm, for mm -hmm, very little mm -hmm. money or much less money than they would if they mm -hmm. lived in London or New York. So it is becoming more attractive, but it's also about uh, making access to this country more open. So it has to do with immigration policy. So in Parvi's case, um, uh, he's actually my colleague in the mm -hmm. One Slovak Family Movement, where we're trying to make uh, Slovak citizenship more accessible to descendants of Slovaks abroad by removing uh, the residency clause. So there has to be things that happen also at a legislative level that make it more attractive and, and attractive mm -hmm. for these digital nomads to come to countries like this which can only benefit uh, the slovak economy because they do bring in that skill they bring in that they ambition in they bring in that youth they bring in that energy mm -hmm. and they bring in those networks and that can benefit slovak businesses and startups mm -hmm. Guys, thank you so much for answering my questions and bringing uh, something new to our audience. It was very, very interesting to listen to you, uh, knowing your perspective. Um, I believe, at least me, uh, I learned a lot from you and hopefully it was also beneficial to our audience. Um, just to let you know, th for those people who are watching us right now, we're going to have another very interesting discussion with Alexandra, who is going to be talking about beauties in Africa next month, last Sunday. So be ready for it. Mm, and guys, thank you so much. Hopefully, thank with you. this uh, conversation, we mm -hmm. also contribute to uh, spreading the awareness of, of Slovakia. So thank you so much again and have thank a lovely you, day. Thank, thank you, everyone, that joined us. Thank Bye. you. Have a good evening. Bye. Happy Sunday. <laughs>